Despair for business owners whose premises have been flooded. The Prime Minister insists the government's response is making a difference. I want people to be reassured that the Environment Agency has got people on the ground in all the affected areas. Also, more than uh, more hundreds of, of high-volume pumps are in practice and right now making a difference. And after the floods, the cold as a health alert is issued for England with ice, frost and fog set to hit in the coming hours. Hello there, a very good evening from the village of Hoveringham in Nottinghamshire where the County Council here has declared a major incident due to rising levels along the River Trent. More than 250 flood warnings remain in place across England and Wales after heavy rain yesterday and overnight. Thousands of people across the country have had to leave their homes and the flooding has also brought misery for commuters with road and rail travel significantly disrupted. Meanwhile, while a cold weather alert has been issued by the UK Health Security Agency across the whole of England with ice, fog and frost all expected overnight. Well, the alert warns of an increase in risks to vulnerable people with significant impacts possible in the health and social care sector. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, we'll hear from flooded business owners and a local politician about the ongoing efforts to help people. We'll also examine the science behind the series of storms that have led up to the current deluge of water. But first, our community's correspondent Becky Johnson reports on a damaging day of floods. Across large parts of the country, riverside communities have been inundated. Weeks of heavy rain left the ground saturated and rivers full. The water had nowhere else to go. In Nottinghamshire, where a major incident was declared, nothing could stop the rising rivers. It came to the main house overnight, basically. Erica showed us inside her home, one of several that are flooded in the village of Collingham. Gosh, it's almost over our wellies, isn't it? Yeah. She didn't have chance to save very much. The entire downstairs now filled with water. I was expecting a bit, but not as high as this. And I'm, I'm, I am concerned about how high it's now going to get. Um, and I wondered if I ought to move some more stuff upstairs, really. So you didn't get all the furniture up in time? Well, there's nowhere for it to go. No. The, I've, it's only a small cottage, so the upstairs is full. These floods are exceptional. This house hasn't flooded for 24 years. It means people who wouldn't expect their homes to fill with water have suddenly had to deal with situations like this. And here, at least, the river levels are still rising. Down the road, you can't tell where Jack's garden ends and the river begins. The tenant he rents the house to got out before the water got in. It's just uh, horrendous. How are you feeling? Uh, upset and angry and scared to know what we've got to find and to what we've got to do to put everything right again. This village is one of many affected, as across the country, hundreds of homes have now flooded. I spoke to people in the East Midlands yesterday who had been affected and talking to them about how devastating the impact of flooding is. I just want people to be reassured that the Environment Agency has got people on the ground in all the affected areas. In Shropshire, flood defences protected parts of the village of Ironbridge from the swollen River Severn. But others couldn't keep the water out, with people doing what they could to try to stay safe. While up in York, parts of the city centre were flooded as the River Ouse burst its banks. In Oxfordshire, water ran down the high street in Chalgrove as fields across the county resembled lakes. In places like Worcester, they'll only know the full extent of the damage as the water begins to recede. As it does so, there's a warning of ice and frost with a health alert issued for England as the weather continues to make life miserable for thousands of people across the country. 
Yeah, it really is a miserable situation for so many this evening. Well, before it got dark here in this village, we did manage to uh, film some footage just to show uh, how uh, bad this village has been uh, affected. Uh, now, everyone here says it's not as bad as the year 2000 when things were really tough and they've got very used to mitigating against flooding. But nonetheless, I think they were even surprised at how high the water came. It's lapping up against some homes here. Some people have chosen to stay. Others have chosen to leave, just depending on their own personal circumstances. But there's a great community spirit. They have flood warning wardens here who go and check up, especially on elderly people, make sure they're OK, they've got everything they want. Uh, Becky Johnson is here, in fact, in the village uh, with me now. And you were here earlier, weren't you? Uh, the fire brigade were here pumping uh, the water out um, and uh, also checking that people were OK. That's right, yeah. There were some representatives from the council just going door to door to check that people were OK, to check that they had what they needed. Um, quite a few water pumps are out trying to get the water uh, away before it reached the houses. Some people were successful, others less so. It's been a really rapidly changing situation around the county, actually. I spent the day uh, across Nottinghamshire and we've seen as um, roads have been closed then reopened, different villages being hit at different times as the river has, the rivers have peaked, of, of course, different tributaries moving in as well. And um, really quite an eerie landscape, actually. At one point, I was driving along an A road uh, and looked to the side and thought, oh, you know, that the fields either side are flooded and then saw a road sign poking out and thought, no, actually, that's a flooded road down there. And um, so it has been really bad. And certainly the village where I was filming near Newark a little bit earlier, they said it's by far the worst they've seen since since 2020. So many people who live there have never seen it this bad. And we know the Environment Agency says all rivers across England are extremely high, some at record high, so that would include the River Itchen near Southampton. And now this forecast, it's really cold conditions. This is going to make life really, really miserable. I think at the moment, People whose, people whose homes have been flooded are in that, that state of shock where they, they just want to get through the next couple of days. But, of course, then it's that awful clean-up process. And those who are fortunate will have insurance. Those who are less fortunate won't. That will be incredibly expensive. And they're going to be facing uh, a dirty, damp house as temperatures plummet and it really will be very miserable for people over the coming days I fear. Yeah it really is. I mean you can feel the temperature dropping now can't you and of course while there's so much surface water once it turns to, to ice it's going to get again uh, uh, very dangerous. Becky thank you we'll speak to you again a little bit later on in the programme. Becky talking there about the situation elsewhere in the country well let's show you what the picture uh, look like, looks like uh, perhaps closer to where you are. Uh, we can see a live map now of all the flood warnings and alerts that are currently in place across England. All the areas marked in red, the Environment Agency says flooding is expected. Their advice is to turn off gas, water, electricity, use flood barriers if you have them, also move belongings, pets and people, of course, upstairs or to safety. At the orange areas, well, that's a flood alert, meaning flooding is possible and people should prepare in case the situation worsens. There have also been widespread floods in Worcestershire. Our data and forensics correspondent Tom Cheshire is there and has been looking at how to defend against more frequent flooding. In Gloucestershire, homes had to be evacuated as the River Severn continued to burst its banks. Our West of England correspondent Dan Whitehead has been speaking to those affected there. And here in Nottinghamshire, a number of warnings remain in place along the banks of the Trent after a major incident was declared in the region on Thursday. Henley on Thames in Oxfordshire has also seen severe flooding today. It really is widespread skies. Alice Porter is there to fill us in. Well, luckily, the banks have not quite yet burst yet, but you can see just how high they've come. They are almost on the exact same level as the road next to me, just centimetres away because they've had here a flood alert and a flood warning in place like so many areas of the country. There are currently 200 flood warnings and 260 flood alerts in place. Now, luckily, Henley upon Th on Thames is one of those towns where luckily the town and the res residential area is actually quite far away from the river. But 
This is normally a path. This is a, a very popular path where people will come down here. I actually live near here, and this is one of the, a, a popular walk that I often go on. Um, but you can see that there is no real distinction between where the river begins and ends and where the, the path is, because it is all completely submerged. And the, normally along here, there's sort of boats that people can hire. Of course, when you think of Henley, you think of boats. Uh, people often take them out for the, for the day, even, I have to say, in winter. But that is obviously really not possible at the moment. Now, even since we've been here over the last couple of hours, we've really started to feel the temperatures dropping. And we know there's going to be that yellow weather alert for that cold weather that's come from the UK Health Security Agency and that's coming in from 9am tomorrow and we can already feel those temperatures dropping already. Now that's going to make conditions even more difficult for people. Driving here there was a lot of water on the road already. We've really had the ground saturated from after Christmas with Storm McKieran, Storm Babbitt, and then we've had the additional rainfall that's come today and there's simply nowhere for all that water to go. And the worry is, is particularly for some of the roads, some of the, the low-lying roads, like you can see here, uh, that some of that will turn to ice. And I think that's going to be the worry. The good news is we're not expecting any more rain, which I think will be uh, for any towns like this that are next to water, will be obviously a good thing, but it's that cold spell that's coming soon. I think that's going to be the worry for lots of people across the country. Yeah, that's one ray of light, uh, isn't it, that there is no more heavy rain, at least, uh, forecast. Alice, uh, thank you very much. That's the situation then in Henley-on-Thames. Let's take a look now at uh, West End Parade, which is in Gloucester. It's where residents have been dealing with the flooding there. Our West of England correspondent, Dan Whitehead, reports. The roads here have turned to rivers. On West End Parade in Gloucester, residents were woken by water rushing into their homes. Do you want that big jacket I got you the other day? The Pegler family have come to rescue their elderly father, who's trapped upstairs. Well, what can you say? What can he do? He's got to move out for as long as it takes. I don't know when he's coming back. Hopefully he'll come back. It's devastating for him, really. He can't really go out, he can't do a lot because of see breathlessness and things like that. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of hard work and things for him to just even leave the house now. Oh, yeah. Take the time. There you go. With the help of his son and granddaughter, 81-year-old Dennis made it safely out. Plenty of people have decided to grab their belongings, pack up and leave. But there are others who are sticking it out, staying in their homes and hoping that these river levels have peaked. But it's a constant battle. The pumps are on non-stop. He's fighting the, the elements of the seven until around about half past five this morning and then it came over into our property. Or... What's your plan today? Just keep it at bay as much as we can. The Environment Agency is trying to lower water levels here, but high tide makes this a race against time. For some, being rescued, young, old, and even our four-legged friends was the only answer. Dan Whitehead, Sky News, in Gloucester. So the people uh, and pets of Gloucester there trying to do their best uh, against these floods. And after a series of uh, winter storms swept across the country over the last couple of weeks, the ground, and it's true here as well in many areas, is completely saturated. The rainfall yesterday and overnight has exacerbated the situation and the ongoing impact is likely to be felt over the next few days as rivers continue to rise. Our data and forensics correspondent Tom Cheshire reports. This is a tale of two bridges, both surrounded by floodwaters. But traffic still flows over the bridge in Upton on Severn in Worcestershire. The other, just a few miles away, is cut off by the waters. So too is the village it serves, Eckington, whose residents must take long diversions. What gets flooded and what doesn't is a question of nature, of science and of policy. The waters in Upton are high, but the flood defences built in the last decade keep them at bay. That means main road access, which makes it easier for volunteer rescue workers to prepare. 
before they head out to isolated flooded houses. We're very lucky here. I mean, I was here in 2007 in this very place of rescuing people. Uh, and we've seen a, a fantastic response from the Environment Agency. Only four miles away, it's a different story. We've come here to visit a local in a pub just over there, but, well, you can see what the issue is. This road is completely flooded, and that is the problem here. It can seem a lottery in terms of what gets defended and what doesn't. So we take the long way round, a diversion that publican Kerry says is bad for her business and the whole village. Ironically, it's not the bridge, it's the road before and after. So is there a way that the, the road commencing to the bridge and afterwards can be raised? I don't know the answer, um, but definitely I think it needs looking into. Flooding is a fact of life in this part of Worcestershire, but political choices determine who gets what from a limited pot of money. How many homes the government protects is a big indicator of how well they're doing. So how have the government been doing against their promises? In 2020, the Environment Agency committed to better protecting 336,000 properties by 2027. That's since been revised down 40% to 200,000 homes. And there was a £34 million shortfall in the Environment Agency's maintenance funding for 2022 to 2023. And of course, that has a knock-on effect. Last year, some defences were deemed to be at sub-par condition meaning an extra 203,000 properties were at increased flood risk. And that's all bad enough now, but there'll be a relentless increase in annual rainfall over the coming years. That coming deluge is why some scientists think the current approach isn't the right one. We don't just have to um, rely on control over the amount of water coming down down the rivers, for example, we can think about the ways in which we use land, we can think about where we locate critical infrastructure, we can think about behavioural changes. That might mean fewer roads or bridges to nowhere. Tom Cheshire, Sky News, Eckington, Worcestershire. Well, one of those affected by the flooding is landlord Mario Thomas, whose pub has been washed out by waters four feet deep, but uh, he's in Thursk in North Yorkshire. Uh, good to have you with us, Mario. You've had a, a really tough couple of days. Tell me what's happened. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be up in Thursk, actually. I didn't have a, a short break, albeit it's a bit of a uh, the reason being through a disaster. Um, it's been tearful, heartbreaking to see your business go under. It's... Um, it's really uh, heartbreaking. But I'm blessed to have um, the, the building is owned by Admiral Taverns and their support is phenomenal, as is the customers and the residents around my property are right behind us. So um, hopefully the waters will have receded in the next three or four days. I'll be back in Jackfield where my pub is and we'll start the cleaning process and we'll be back up and running as soon as possible. My heart, though, does go out to everybody across the country who are having the same effects as us. Um, I, my, you know, if we could do something for each other, we certainly would. Well, it's good to hear both your positivity and also that you've been getting help from, from the owners and from the community as well. Just describe for me uh, what it was like when the waters began to come in and to rise. Well, it's, it's, it started last week, uh, the trickle had started. We have the problem where we've got the River Severn and we've also got a brook that comes from behind the pub. You can see it in the pictures there, just in the distance. That builds up and also the ground is quite hollow. So the flooding starts within the building, not from outside the building. Blocked drains are a problem. They've never been cleaned, so they start to start the process far quicker than they would do normally. Um, right, so um, we had a small flood on New Year's Eve um, for a couple of hours. I had to stay shut while we, had, we got a large amount of water out from in front of the bar. No damage caused. It was all cleaned and sanitised before we reopened. And then um, we was OK. And then Monday night, New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day night, sorry, it started a little trickle and uh, the predictions were that it was going to be very minor the following day. But unfortunately, when we arrived at the premises on the Tuesday, um, 
it was far serious than we and even anticipated. The, fl the pictures you see at the water now has rose above the bar area, and that is more severe than we even thought would happen. Yeah, really, really bad situation for you. Have you lost lots of uh, equipment? Did you manage to rescue stuff? We, 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 well, we rescued the fridges and the electrics. Most electrics are high up, uh, the plugs, etc. Um, we've lost some tables and chairs, obviously. And the glasses, what we thought were deemed as being safe in boxes and everything, have tended to be floating away. Um, you can see our barrels have burst through from behind the bar, beyond the pub. Um, the beer will have been affected as well. So um, we're going to take a financial hit, obviously. When do you think your customers will be able to come back? I mean, this is going to take quite a while to fix, isn't it? <laughs> we got, we, once the waters have, recite, uh, have, re, have, re, have left the building, hopefully in the next three days or so, um, the cleaning process starts. So Admiral Taverns will send their wonderful team in to get the cleaning process going. Obviously, the drying and also the sanitising needs to be done to make the premises safe. This is something we're used to now. This is our third time in 12 months where we've had to go through the procedure. It's nothing new to me. I've seen it all before, before I took the pub on. So, um, yeah, my, my aim is to get the pub back up and running and back to the community. Well, well done you. We love that positivity. Maybe you can offer them a free pint if they come and help you uh, clean up. Um, Mario, best of luck. Uh, you have oh, our, our good wishes and I uh, <laughs> hope you get up and up and running again soon. Well, hopefully we'll be up and running within Thomas. two to three weeks. Thank you very much. Well, I think... That would be good going if you, if you manage it. Best of luck. Thank you for speaking to us. Mario Thomas there, um, uh, uh, landlord in North Yorkshire. Uh, well, let's talk about the, uh, the political dimension of all of this. The Prime Minister says the public should be reassured by the response to flooding. He was speaking in Manchester today, urging members of the public to follow local guidelines. Well, actually, I spoke to people in the East Midlands yesterday who had been affected and talking to them about how devastating the impact of flooding is. I just want people to be reassured that the Environment Agency has got people on the ground in all the affected areas. Also, more than uh, more hundreds of, of high-volume pumps are in practice right now making a difference. Uh, and it's important that people follow the advice that's given in local areas where there are flood warnings that have been given. Important that those are followed and people should be reassured, as I say, the Environment Agency have got people on the ground everywhere, absolutely recognise the urgency of what is happening. Uh, let's bring in our chief political correspondent, John Craig. Uh, so, John, the Prime Minister speaking a bit earlier today. What's the reaction been to his words? Well, opposition MPs have been saying he really should have uh, visited uh, one of the uh, badly stricken areas. Now, you heard the PM there say that he'd spoken to people in Nottinghamshire. Well, that was actually during a political campaigning visit. He was doing another political campaigning visit today in Greater Manchester, Stockport and Hazel Grove, rather than go to the areas badly affected. Now, uh, the uh, Labour Party's been talking today about uh, the need for what they call a... A, a Cobra-style task force to tackle this problem. Now, tonight, uh, Sir Keir Starmer has uh, said this in a tweet. My heart goes out to everyone devastated by floods. I thank the emergency services for their tireless work. Labour's Flood Resilience Task Force will make sure flood defences are in the right place and fit for purpose. People's lives shouldn't be upended by extreme rain. Now... Labour uh, has uh, claimed today that Rishi Sunak has been, in their words, asleep at the wheel. Uh, this is a task force. The idea is be a Cobra-style task force that would meet every winter ahead of the peak season for flooding, coordinating flooding preparation resilience between central government, local authorities, local communities and emergency services. Uh, Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, uh, spoke about Labour's proposals a little earlier. But my thoughts are with the people who are affected by these terrible floods that we've seen uh, across England in the last couple of days. Uh, we've been urging the government to do more to uh, protect uh, homes and businesses from these floods. And the government need to get on the front foot and to go to the areas affected by the floods uh, and to set out the support that's going to be provided. 
Well, some Conservative MPs have expressed concerns as well. Alicia Cairns, who's MP for Rutland and Melton, has talked about how lessons need to be learned. Now, in the past uh, half hour or so, Steve Barclay, the Environment Secretary, has tweeted um, uh, that he's been kept fully updated by the Environment Agency on the response to flooding. He says around 44,000 homes have been protected so far. And he says the chief executive has assured him that support will be provided for as long as is needed in all areas. So the government claims that people are being protected. That is disputed by opposition MPs and questioned by one or two Tories as well. MPs are back at Westminster on Monday. Well, this time of year, we often get uh, stories about uh, the... The failure of the government to prepare adequately. No doubt we'll hear that again. Labour and the uh, Lib Dems are talking about a National Audit Office report uh, published just in November, a couple of months ago, which they claim uh, the government has not gone ahead and uh, implemented some of the commitments that it's made in the past on flood defences. So we'll likely get a row about this when Parliament's back. As for now, though, the PM is desperately hoping that the, probably that the weather gets a bit better. Yeah, which I think uh, it is set to do. Certainly it's going to rain less. Uh, John, thank you very much. John Craig in Westminster there. So that's the national political picture. Let's get something of the local political picture, shall we? Joining me now is Nottinghamshire councillor Richard McRae. Uh, very good evening to you, Richard. Um, how's the flooding uh, in your neck of the woods? Well, it's not been very good in Stapleford and just seeing them news clips on there, it's been bad everywhere, isn't it? But Bezel Lane's been hit recently and then back in October... Lots of streets in Stapleford, especially Wellington Street, have been hit. So we've got a mixture of residents and business owners that's been affected, and it's really bad for everybody. Yeah, and Nottinghamshire has uh, borne the brunt of a lot of it, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I mean, we've got the River Trent, and that, that's really bad in other areas as well. But obviously, I'm, I'm a Stapleford councillor, so that that's there's me and lots of other councillors in Stapleford. We've got a, a really good councillors down here. They've all been out helping the residents. They've been trying to help the businesses. We're being let down by Nottinghamshire County Council. The drains need cleaning, and we're being let down by Seven Trent. And instead of them arguing with each other and passing the book from one to the other, we just want them to work together because it's affecting the businesses and the livelihoods of people that live in our town. You know, it's a really good point you make about the drains. I was speaking to a landlord a few moments ago and it's an issue that he brought up. Others have mentioned it as well today. It seems incredible, doesn't it, that something as simple as cleaning drains can be so tricky. Why is that? Well, I, they just keep blaming each other, don't they? Like, Seven Trent say it's the council's fault, the council say it's Seven Trent's fault. And I, my thing is, let, they just need to work together because it's the residents and the businesses. We've got lots of resident, uh, sorry, businesses on Bezel Lane and they're all talking about pulling out. Now, if they pull out of the Stapleford, that, that has a knock-on effect because then, then people aren't using the shops and businesses on the high street. So we need to do all we can. And I think the other thing as well, we need to stop building on the green belt because that's having a massive effect. The water's got to go somewhere and we need the green belt. We need these um, floodplain areas. We need to stop building on them. And I think that's quite bad and that's having an effect as well. We're seeing it now. What about management of the, the River Trent? I'm about 400 yards from uh, the river itself and everything from pretty much where I'm standing to the river is now completely underwater. Um, a lot of work has been done. What else needs to be done to manage the river better? Well, I think it's not just the river, it's what leads into it. And you've got it starts off with your little streams and your gullies and that. So back, back to the drains, isn't it? We need better management there. And if the drains are cleaned, we need the streams, the the the, um, the the little brooks, the dikes, whatever people call them nowadays, they need dredging. And we've got the River Erewash in Brocks, though. I can't remember the last time that was cleaned out. And I think if, this, if they look at the smaller issues and sort them out, then it helps with the bigger issue because all these streams, dikes and rivers and that, they all lead into the River Trent. So if we can clean them out, as I've said, clean the drains out, um, clean, clean everything like that. It, it just needs joined up thinking. And all, all we can wish for is that the council and Seven Trent work together. And then at the end of the day, it benefits the businesses, it benefits the residents, and then it makes it a better place. Because I always say Stapleford is the centre of the earth, which it is. And like I said earlier, we've got lots of councillors working together, which is really good. But the bit, we need the bigger organisations like the county council. They need to get their heads together with Seven Trent and just do as much as they can 
and it's going to help. But this, as you're showing on here, it's the whole country, isn't it? So perhaps it's the same issues all over the place. But like I said a few minutes ago, we need to stop building on the green belt as well because that's having a massive effect. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, uh, we're hearing the same sort of issues uh, all around the country. Um, just finally, tell me about local councils, uh, because, again, it's a mixed picture. Uh, the council here has been uh, very good, knocking on doors, making sure people are safe, uh, uh, checking up to see if uh, they can do anything for, for local residents who are affected. Um, is that the case around Nottinghamshire, do you think? Have you got a good bunch of councillors on the whole? Well, I'll say Stapleford and I'll stay Trowell as well, which is the next village along. And when the recent floods in October, you know, massive thanks to Stapleford Town Council because they opened up the town hall, the Carnegie Hall, it's called. So the residents are somewhat safe to go. And Trowell Parish Council did the same as well. So thank you to the staff at those two councils. But the councillors, you know, it doesn't matter what parties they're in. The people that live in Stapleford, the councillors, the residents, and that they all came out and helped each other. I mean, the fire brigade are absolutely amazing. Stapleford, uh, Stapleford fire brigade are brilliant. Team Stapleford all day long, and they was helping as many people as they can. You know, you have to put political differences aside. At the end of the day, you're all there for the residents and the businesses, and that we're lucky in Stapleford because that did happen, and lots of people came out and we helped. And like I said, it's the county council, and it's seven Trent that's letting us down at the minute. I tell you what, you've really put Stapleford uh, on the map uh, in the last couple of minutes. Centre of the universe, I think you just said. Listen, Richard, always, great to speak to you, Richard McRae, uh, councillor. All right, good to see you. Thank you very much, and best Take of luck care. over the next good few days and, uh, and weeks as you as you as you try and help uh, the, the people of uh, uh, of Nottinghamshire. Um, uh, so let's uh, speak once again to our correspondent, Skies Becky Johnson, who's been uh, monitoring events uh, for us throughout the evening. And as we, as we look ahead, Becky, you can really feel under your feet, can't you, just how waterlogged the ground is here. It's really saturated, and it means that this water isn't going to go away quickly there's some uh, council workers over there in the, in the background it is going but it's going to be really slow well we know that rivers like the trent like the seven are, are slow to rise that's why we've had a slightly delayed response to the very heavy rainfall we had earlier in the week and are seeing the flooding now but they're also slow to recede and so people could have water in their houses for hours if not days to come but before it eventually goes. I think it's interesting, all, all the things that you've been discussing, events like this do lead to those big questions. People who don't have flood defences protecting their properties will be wanting to know why more hasn't been done to protect their properties. It also leads to questions on a national level about, about planning. You know, why are so many people living on floodplains? But I think Really, this evening and in the immediate aftermath of all of this, I think you've noticed it and I have too, that community spirit um, in, in places, villages and towns right across the country that have been hit, you see those examples of kindness, actually, that have come out and neighbours helping each other out. I spoke to a woman whose two cats are now installed in a house over the road that isn't flooded. You know, we know pubs have been taking people in and giving them meals and warm drinks. And I think it's those little acts of kindness that will actually get people through these next few days and then those big questions will be asked because this has been extreme flooding it's affected a lot of places it's affected some places that wouldn't normally expect to be affected by flooding and it will lead to questions about what needs to be done to protect um, communities like these in the future. Yeah, that's something you highlighted to me uh, a little bit earlier, that um, many people expect to, to flood, and this is sadly a, 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 something that recurs uh, from time to time, but they take measures to fight it. But uh, this time, it seems that places that were never expecting to get flooded have been hit. Yeah, I was um, in a village earlier, and people were saying, well, you know, the, the gardens often flood, but the houses don't. And in fact, the houses there hadn't flooded since 2020. So, uh, sorry, since 2000. 24 years ago. So for the most part, people there have, have never experienced their home flooding. They, they didn't own it the last time uh, houses there flooded. And therefore, even though river levels are rising, they weren't hugely concerned until they continued to rise and continued to rise and the rain continued to fall. And there was this sort of seeping realisation 
that they were going to have to get out. And almost by that point, it was, it was too late to start protecting their furniture. Really, it was a question of just getting to safety. And I think that's been the difference this time. You know, some people do sadly expect a flood when, when there is a, a huge amount of rainfall and others don't. And it's those people who've been taken by surprise, I think, um, who'll find it most difficult to cope with the aftermath, what to do, whether they have insurance, all those questions, and then how to get their house back to any semblance of normality when yeah. it's going to be freezing cold. It's going to be very, very damp, and of course the electric's out. Just such a very miserable, unpleasant condition. Such a miserable start to Indeed. the new year, isn't Indeed. it? Last thing anybody wanted. Becky, uh, thank you very much. I know you're going to carry on monitoring the situation uh, throughout the evening. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, well, people here are hunkering down, trying to stay warm if they've decided to stay. I was speaking to one gentleman a bit earlier who has got a pump in his cellar. He says he's not going to get any sleep tonight. He didn't get any sleep last night. He's simply got to monitor that pump pump make sure it works make sure the water uh, gets out and of course everybody also keeping an eye on the uh, weather forecast uh, we are thankful that uh, no more rain or heavy rain is predicted here but as we've also been hearing it is expected to get really cold uh, fog frost ice all on the way